Hello, my name is Benjamin Huskovich, and I'm a research fellow at the School of Regulation and Global Governance at the Australian National University. I'm one of the contributors to the latest Strategic Asia volume, Reshaping Economic Interdependence in the Indo-Pacific. With my co-authors, Darren Lim and Victor Ferguson, I've written the Australia chapter in this volume. It's entitled, Australia's Reassessment of Economic Interdependence with China. The paper we've written has two main areas of focus. First, it details the shifting patterns of Australia's economic interdependence with China in recent years. And second, it unpacks some of the key drivers of the shift in how Australian political leaders and the public at large think about the costs and benefits of this economic interdependence with China. For decades, Australia has practiced and preached liberal economic policy at home and abroad. Internationally, it's been in favor of the relatively free movement of goods, services, and capital. So as part of this generally economic rationalist outlook, Australia has long insisted that it could enjoy a relatively clean and easy separation between economics and national security. But this started to change, in particular in the mid to late 2010s. And this was a period when China's statecraft was rapidly evolving, the Australia-China relationship became much more tense, and the world was eventually shaken by the eruption of the COVID-19 pandemic. Australia's perception of the costs and benefits of economic interdependence with China shifted dramatically in these years. Among other factors, this period of change in the late 2010s was driven by the discovery of China's growing influence in Australia's domestic politics. It was also driven by Beijing's economic sanctions campaign that began in May 2020, and which is still ongoing as of November 2023, when I'm recording this video. It was also a product of pandemic-induced supply chain vulnerabilities. Prompted by these and other developments, the dominant thinking in Australia began to shift. Economic interdependence with China is now seen as carrying sustained and significant geopolitical risks. Having said all of that though, our chapter finds that despite this shift and clear changes in Australian government policy, the bulk of economic exchange between the two economies remains extremely robust. The trade relationship in particular continues to boom. Despite China's trade restrictions against lucrative exports like coal, copper, and wine, China remained the first or second largest export destination for six of Australia's top 10 exports in 2022. At the same time, China remains by far Australia's largest export destination, with nearly 28% of Australia's total exports by value in 2022 heading to the Chinese market. Indeed, we find that the only evidence of meaningful and potentially enduring decoupling between Australia and China has manifested in really quite narrow domains. These include information and communications technology infrastructure and critical mineral supply chains. Considering all of this, and given the ongoing stabilization and repair of the Australia-China diplomatic and trade relationship, Australia's economic interdependence with China doesn't look likely to unwind anytime soon. This Australian story has implications for policymakers in the United States and elsewhere. Despite the growing threat perception of China and Beijing's sustained use of economic sanctions against Australian exports, Australia remains committed to deep and enduring economic interdependence with China. Short of extreme worst case scenarios like conflict in the Taiwan Strait, Australia's decoupling from China is only likely to be limited and highly targeted. In fact, one could go so far as to say that rather than too much economic interdependence with China, Australia is likely to be much more worried about too little economic growth in China. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy our chapter and this latest volume of Strategic Asia.